Hello and welcome to ATG 4950. In this session, we will address capacity and constraint management to understand how the customer demand can be met and how to accommodate market changes. To understand how to satisfy customer demand, we need first to define capacity. Capacity is the throughput or the number of units a facility can hold, receive, store, or produce in a period of time. Looking at the definition, we recognize some of the reasons why capacity is an issue. For example, the capacity can determine fixed cost. Also, it can determine if demand will be satisfied, which means can we produce or do we have the capacity to produce the proper amount that the market needs. To meet the required capacity, uh, the organization has three options. We have the first one, which is long range planning. In the long range planning, uh, we add facilities and uh, add long lead time equipment in the uh, modification uh, phase. Uh, in the intermediate range, uh, the planning begins in the modification phase, but might extend during the use phase. One, once we start using the machines, it will extend, and then at that point, you might need to add personnel and build or use uh, inventory. For the short range uh, planning, uh, the planning and the use will be in the uh, use phase. Uh, so in that phase, you will find um, jobs being scheduled, personnel being scheduled, and allocating machinery, and the capacity has been used or fully used. Usually we design capacity to be the maximum uh, theoretical output of the system expressed in rate. But actually, most of the time, capacity maximum cannot be reached. Then how could, we, could it be done? Or how could it be determined? Uh, the company or the firm has to define a measure uh, for their capacity, for their own capacity. Uh, the effective capacity will be the capacity a firm expects to achieve uh, given current operation constraints which often lower uh, than design capacity. So although, you know, in the design capacity I have certain number, I have maximum theoretical output, but that does not mean that I will meet it. That's why the company has to define their own, which is called effective capacity, and this effective capacity is the one that the company wishes or would like or uh, would uh, need to reach to uh, be effective. Uh, it, it will not reach the maximum. So while um, it will not reach the maximum, still, you know, it has an effective uh, capacity. Um, why is that? Because we have lots of factors, many factors, that prevents us from achieving that capacity on a continuous basis. There is no way that you can achieve the design capacity because of the different factors and constraints uh, within the operations and productions. Based on the definition of both design capacity and effective capacity, we can define both utilization and efficiency of the machines. Utilization is the percent of, des uh, of design capacity achieved. How much uh, did um, actually I used from the design capacity? Um, the efficiency is the percentage of effective ca capacity achieved, so it's actually the actual output divided by the effective capacity. So utilization is the actual output compared to the design, divided by the design. The efficiency is the actual output compared to the effective uh, capacity. 
To understand this more, let's go over an example. We have a bakery. That bakery has an actual production for last week that is 148 rolls. Effective capacity is equal to 175 rolls. The design capacity the design capacity is 1200 roll per hour and the bakery operates seven days per week uh, three uh, shifts each shift eight hours so um, to calculate the design capacity we multiply seven times three times eight uh, multiplied by the uh, number of rolls per hour which will equal to uh, 201 thousand and six hundred rolls so the utilization will be equal to the uh, actual production divided by the design capacity which will be equal to 73.4 percent while the efficiency will equal to the uh, production the actual production divided by the uh, effective capacity which will e be equal to 84.6 percent now since we have the efficiency is 84 percent and the efficiency of a new line is 75 percent then uh, the expected output will equal to the effective capacity multiplied by the efficiency the effective capacity is 175,000 rolls uh, multiplied by 75% of the um, new line efficiency which will equal to 131 rolls 131,250 uh, uh, rolls that which means that um, actually Uh, the actual production exceeded the expected output so the ex expected output with an efficiency of 75% is 131,250 while the actual production was 148,000 and that exceeds the expected output which is good in some way uh, of course it's based on what kind of production in this case we have bakery and uh, you don't want um, uh, the rest of the bread to be as a waste uh, of production so it depends what's going to happen with uh, that bread <coughs> capacity um, as a decision must be integrated into the organization's mission and strategy um, would you um, uh, the organization should include in that uh, would they uh, like to extend their uh, capacity later on are they planning to do that and if they are planning to do that what which strategy are they going to follow is it long-term strategy intermediate term or short-term strategy um, uh, if they are planning to do that then the facility layout has to be uh, in a certain way where it can uh, allow for a flexible uh, redesign or flexible addition for additional machines to uh, include or to increase uh, capacity the capacity one of the factors that affects capacity is demand so if we look at the demand and we start comparing that with the capacity the first situation if demand exceeds capacity in this case we can reduce or control demand by raising prices or scheduling longer uh, lead time or um, as a long-term uh, solution the company can increase uh, capacity uh, what if the capacity exceeds demand in this case you know I have extra item extra product 
and for that extra product to be sold I have to stimulate the market through price reduction or aggressive marketing either we do sales or we do um, uh, aggressive marketing we uh, 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 either by TV you know uh, increase uh, advertisement either by TV or internet or uh, by any kind of uh, uh, channel or uh, way to uh, be able to sell the extra items or the extra products that I have or the company might change uh, some of the product specifications uh, you know uh, at least you know so, some certain even uh, simple specifications such as the color uh, producing something with different colors might you know uh, give it a boost a boost to sell, uh, to be sold in the market uh, faster and better uh, than um, uh, just one color so even you know for the simplest characteristics or specifications can make an effect or can, can make uh, uh, actual actual uh, uh, stimulus or uh, assist in the sales and marketing for that uh, product uh, the other one is to adjust based on the seasonal demand um, for example uh, if I'm producing uh, the, the holiday cards or the event cards uh, those cards like Hallmark uh, cards uh, this can be produced based on the season or the event um, some of them will be uh, produced with the Christmas um, uh, holiday uh, uh, as a Christmas holiday card some of them as uh, Valentine, some will, some of them will be Eastern, uh, uh, Thanksgiving. So uh, it depends on the season or the holiday. Uh, I can just uh, change the product to fit into the season. And this is how actually uh, we can manage the demand and at the same time manage the capacity of uh, the uh, production. Uh, some of the consideration for capacity is to uh, forecast the demand accurately and know exactly what's needed in the market and uh, um, the uh, let's say the uh, accurate amount uh, needed or uh, that can be uh, distributed in the market um, also understanding the technology and capacity increments uh, then find the optimal uh, operating level or volume of production and build uh, for change if you need uh, additional uh, machinery or uh, uh, additional products then you should be flexible or you should have the capability to be flexible to change to increase the capacity or uh, meet uh, customer uh, demand uh, or market demand Some of the tactics that we can follow to match capacity to demand is making uh, staffing changes. Uh, we can also adjust uh, equipment and processes uh, such as purchasing additional machinery or selling or leasing out existing equipment if I don't need um, those equipment anymore. Uh, so either we increase or we decrease and the increase will be by purchasing and uh, uh, decrease by selling or leasing this equipment also improving methods to increase throughput and redesigning the product to facilitate more throughput uh, through the company or the firm some of the approaches to capacity expansion uh, we might do it with um, uh, increments based uh, on the expected demand so every time we have an increase in demand we will have an increase in capacity and we'll have um, uh, uh, incremental expansion uh, and that's as shown in um, as shown in figure A where we have increment so we have uh, incremental expansion in this case or we can do it as one step and meet the demand by doing a one step expansion for the factory um, we can do um, 
uh, capacity lags demand with incremental expansion so actually the demand will be ahead of our expansion that's why you know we have it late so here the uh, capacity is um, um, after the fact here the uh, capacity uh, before the fact um, also we have attempts to have an average capacity with incremental uh, expansion uh, to make sure that we are within uh, the capacity, capacity and we will not have uh, uh, excess material that um, will need inventory and need extra uh, people and extra money uh, or extra cost associated with it. One of the most important te techniques uh, that need to be used in these situations is a break-even analysis and the break-even analysis is a technique for evaluating process and equipment alternatives uh, the main objective of uh, this technique is to find the point in dollars and units at which cost equals uh, revenue uh, when do I break even exactly break even with what I spend that means you know I had certain costs certain money that I spent and I would like my money to come back to me when would I break even and start making money uh, it requires estimation of fixed cost and variable cost in addition to uh, the actual revenue uh, coming uh, after selling uh, the product uh, what do we mean by fixed cost and variable cost? The fixed cost are costs that continue even if no units are produced. So you have to understand that um, even if you are not in the production phase, if you are not producing anything, you still have uh, depreciation for the equipment, you still have taxes, you, you still have debt, you still have mortgage, mortgage payment, whether that facility is running or not running. Uh, for the variable cost, uh, those are the costs that vary with the volume of uh, units produced, such as labor, number of hours needed to uh, achieve certain uh, activities to produce that product. Uh, material, the material used for that product, the more uh, production uh, units or product uh, units, the more material I'm using. Uh, portions of utilities. If I'm using electricity, having uh, two machines is different than having four machines is different than having ten machines. So I'm consuming more electricity by adding more machines. And if I'm using water in my production, then the water will be increasing as the production increases. So this is part of the utilities that can be used or might be used in uh, the line of production. Uh, contribution uh, is the difference between selling price and variable uh, cost so those are uh, you know the different variable costs that will be associated with the units produced the problem with this uh, break-even analysis is that it has certain ass assumptions and uh, those assumptions are uh, that cost and revenue are linear functions and in, in real uh, world or real life it's not uh, linear um, it, it uh, assumed that we actually know the cost uh, which is very difficult to accomplish and also there is um, uh, no time uh, value, value of money which is also not true because time uh, equal money or time value money But anyway, this is uh, uh, a way at least to uh, you know, understand when do I break even or to give you a closer look or to give you an estimate on um, uh, when you can break even with uh, your production. Maybe it's, it's um, not accurate 100%, but at least it will give you an idea on uh, the break even analysis or the break even point. So in this case, the chart introduces break-even analysis and uh, break-even uh, or crossover uh, chart uh, shows 
that we have total cost, we have variable cost, fixed cost, and the total cost is uh, uh, changing based on the change of the variable uh, cost. <coughs> now remember that this chart was developed based on certain assumptions that might apply, that might not apply in real world. So this can be considered as a limitation for using this type of break-even analysis model. Um, and we have to consider that we don't know all the information with um, uh, certainty. We don't have uh, any certain information. Uh, also, the money does not have uh, a time value in this case. And the hypothesis that it's linear a relationship that holds only within the range of production volume and that's how here we have it as linear while it's not going to be as linear as we expected again for the uh, actual uh, it will be or for the sales it will be linear so I have the difference between the uh, total revenue and the uh, cost as you can see the revenue before certain point, before this point, so the revenue before this point was uh, less than the cost, and after the um, this point it became more and that's when we started making a uh, profit and the profit uh, increases as we get more experience in meeting the demand or knowing how much do we need to sell and uh, being aggressive in marketing and uh, in uh, uh, stimulating the uh, 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 market To calculate the break-even, we can calculate it in two different ways, either we break-even point in units or break-even point in dollars. The uh, break-even uh, point uh, in units, we uh, uh, add the X uh, to indicate that we are talking about units. If it's in dollar, we add the dollar sign at the corner here to uh, make sure that we are uh, calculating in a dollar. Uh, P is the price uh, of that uh, product per unit uh, after all discounts and then uh, X is the number of units produced X is the number of units produced uh, usually we have total re revenue TR is the total revenue which should equal to the price per unit multiplied by X uh, whatever the price is after all discounts it will be multiplied by the number of units and that will produce the total revenue we have also fixed cost that will be F and variable cost that will be V so the total uh, cost is equal to the fixed cost plus the variable uh, cost and the variable cost uh, might be per unit so if it's per unit then I have to multiply by X which is the number of units produced so the break-even uh, point occurs when um, the uh, total revenue is equal to total cost or when uh, uh, we know that the total uh, revenue is uh, the number of uh, units multiplied by the price per unit which will equal to the uh, fixed cost plus variable cost per unit multiplied by the number of units using um, just a uh, reformation for that we have the uh, the formula which uh, states that the uh, break-even point per unit is equal to the fixed cost divided by the price per unit minus the variable uh, cost per unit
while the break even uh, point in dollar uh, will equal to the break even point in units multiplied by uh, the price per unit uh, which equal to the uh, fixed cost divided by price per unit minus uh, variable multiplied all by uh, p we can get the p down like this and if we got uh, the p down it will be p minus v divided by p and with a little bit of uh, changes it uh, that the uh, uh, break even uh, point in dollars will equal to the fixed cost divided by 1 minus the variable uh, divided by uh, p or price per unit To calculate the profit, we know that the profit is uh, the difference between the total revenue and the total cost. So, uh, the gain that I get is TR minus TC, and TR minus TC will equal to uh, B minus V multiplied by X minus the fixed cost, and that is the profit in this equation. Now let's take a small example to uh, illustrate how uh, that works. So if we have a fixed cost of $10,000 and we have uh, the uh, variable material cost per unit is uh, 75 cents and we have direct uh, labor that's equal to uh, $1.50 per unit and we have a selling price of four dollar per unit calculate the break even point in dollar just by you know um, uh, multiplying directly uh, or substituting directly with the values uh, we will get the uh, value in dollars which will be uh, twenty two thousand eight hundred fifty seven and fourteen cents uh, as a value uh, or as a break-even break point uh, in dollar amount. So I'll break even when I reach uh, the uh, uh, production or the sales of uh, 22,857. That means I have to sell 5,714 units before I break even with uh, the cost if we can draw that then you know just by looking at the break even point which will be here then before that I'm still not making money after 6,000 units I will start making money so if I produce 4,000 that means I'm not breaking even uh, once I start reaching to uh, 5,000 um, or around 6,000 at that point we can start making money it's uh, Five thousand seven hundred fourteen. Uh, that will be all for uh, today's session. If you have any questions, uh, please email it uh, through Florida Online, or um, uh, you can call me or come uh, to my office during office hours. Thank you and have a great day.